¿Qué nos puedes decir de A Segunda Vista? What can you say us about A Segunda Vista? Segunda Vista. Did you see the film? Yes. All right. It's very, it's like a very crazy film. <laughs> <laughs> very crazy. But uh, it's it's uh, to start talking about this film. It's sort of. Uh, since it's very layered and there's so many different themes that interject and it, the film also plays on all these juxtapositions so for example you have the bigger political picture against the micro political picture in the kitchen with the man and woman and it's sort of mirrored in the bigger political picture with uh, you know the kitchen debate between Khrushchev and Kennedy uh, Khrushchev and, and Nixon and sort of while they're actually talking in the kitchen they talk about women and the position of women and they talk all about their rockets and at the same time you have the, the stories that are propagated through the commercials, the coffee commercials. It's sort of, they're mirroring one another. So, it, 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 it works on those different levels. So, the way the film was structured is that, first of all, um, of course, there is also the fiction story, where a Hitchcock meets a Hitchcock, and it's a Hitchcock that actually embodies television, there's a Hitchcock in Buenos Cinema, and it sort of frames the beginning of the 60s and, and it sort of frames also all the stories that were told in mainstream media, the political stories, stories between man and woman or between woman and woman or between man and man. Also the, the stories that Hitchcock propagates in his fiction films and uh, you know uh, where very often it's a love story set against sort of a political situation that frames that love story where the, the two protagonists are, are can't get together but it's actually prevented through the plot that is propagated through the political situation and sort of all of that interjects where I, I try to create critical gaps that suddenly tries to see how stories are constructed not only political stories but also fiction stories and how identity is created on a personal level but also stories created on a bigger political scheme so and I was trying to see how 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 all of us the way the way we construct our world and our reality tells stories and trying to deconstruct those stories in mainstream media. So, but I don't know where to start because there's so many <laughs> different things. So, algo, sí, sí. ¿Te digo? Sí, sí, por. Ah, okay. Para bueno. el audio. <laughs> este dice sí. Mientras, después de ver las cosas diferentes, ah, bueno, él fue haciendo una juxtaposición de las macroeconomías, o sea, de la macropolítica a la microeconomía y ver cómo se refleja todo eso a través del comercial de la taza de café, cómo las mujeres eran el reflejo de toda esta economía este, y de esta forma de política. Eso lo muestra a través de los comerciales de café y eso lo ayudó a ir tratando a través de diferentes niveles culturales. El primero fue la ficción, o sea, cómo Hitchcock fue reflejando esas, estas políticas y el segundo es el reflejo de los años 60, o sea, la cultura de los años 60. También la historia que Hitchcock propagaba con las historias eran las la propagación de las propagandas de las historias políticas de aquellos años. Uh -huh. O sea, el, la, el nivel del miedo, ¿sabes? O sea, la uh -huh. que estaba manejando mucho en esta época. Y él dice mmm, una de esas políticas y cómo llegamos al nivel de esto y trataba de que solo se cultivara esto a nivel del mundo personal. O sea, cómo nosotros vamos eligiendo los comerciales y los vamos haciendo como parte de nuestra vida personal. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo ha sido recibida la película en el mundo? How it is received in the world? Yes. Ah, yes. Um, well, it depends. Um, you know, in Britain, uh, since you know, and and I, I worked with a British novelist, Tom McCarthy, who wrote the story, which is based on on a Borges story, where Borges meets himself, and uh, which has been adapted for you know Hitchcock meeting another Hitchcock, but that is also sort of plays into. Hitchcock's television introductions, very often Hitchcock played on the idea of the double, like for example uh, in one of the introductions for the Alfred Hitchcock Presents, he's in, a, in an Alfred Hitchcock lookalike contest where he plays four times himself and sort of it's a, it's a contest about doubles and he's losing out against himself or he would uh, walk on stage with his own head or he would uh, play with his brother and sort of, he would say, oh, I'm not Hitchcock, this is Hitchcock, or, you know, or he would be taken away because he sort of says, oh, you know, I'm the real Hitchcock, and there was another one who was pretending to be Hitchcock, and all of these were sort of part of the Alfred Hitchcock Presents introductions, and uh, I thought it was sort of interesting because he does it on television, and already television is sort of also the media of doubling, 
and it's sort of it's set in the beginning of the 60s where a lot of cinemas are closing down so you know television pushed Hollywood to redefine itself and I thought ah oh, that's sort of interesting how actually the medium of television reconfigured the way we tell stories and uh, but how that has been perceived across different uh, boundaries culture boundaries is, is sort of you know the 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 idea of translation is, is sort of because television is also a translation of, of from you know cinema did a different translation through pellicula and cinema television the way it translates reality is very different and I would say there's our society is now so abundant with images it's so abundant with 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 sort of in a way that the image culture sort of makes that reality collapses under that abundance of images sort of for example when 9-11 happened in New York it's as if that image of the plane hitting the World Trade Center was already out there in the world like when Slavoj Zizek writes about 9-11 he says it's as if reality came back to haunt us through the repressed politics of Hollywood is that you know that the, the, the political scene is so repressed in America that people cannot imagine that actually terrorists are flying into the World Trade Center. It's as if Hollywood is coming back to haunt America as a lookalike culture. And when Ron Burridge, the lookalike Hitchcock, is sort of for me embodies that lookalike culture. It's as if, you know, we knew 9-11 was already out there, but it comes back to haunt us as a fiction. And it, it haunts us back as sort of a lookalike reality. As if, as if the whole, it's as if the Americans don't want to look at themselves because if you meet your double it's very scary if you look what the CIA has done throughout because the CIA has even sort of uh, tried to uh, make a push they they actually made a push of 50 government they, they actually thrown over 50 governments and when those governments or that political scene comes back to haunt America America is not able to look at itself it's not able to look at itself at its double so if the double comes back to haunt you as yourself then you're scared and what are they doing you know they, they say oh there's a terrorist coming back to haunt us we have to kill him but it's as if her, it's 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 actually the repressed scene comes back to haunt America it's their own double they don't see that they're actually uh, actually chasing their own self and it's sort of what you project out there in the world comes back to haunt you and it sort of lives in in sort of Holly in the Hollywood scene for example, when Soviet Union collapsed in the end of, of the 80s, you see that the imaginary other of America has to be filled in, and it comes back to haunt America as the alien, the extraterrestrial. And the Independence Day, or the beginning of, of sort of the 90s, you have all these programs out in television, the X-Files, it's sort of that E.T. comes back to haunt America <laughs> because they don't have any adversary anymore, they don't have any more enemy, so they have to find a new enemy, so it's the alien coming back to haunt America and sort of suddenly that alien is filled in by Bin Laden. But it's all bullshit, it's bullshit, because it's sort of, America is sort of projecting its image out there, comes back to haunt themselves. And I would say, you know, when the film is shown in America, it's, it's that's what it's all about. It's all about that cultural imperialism that doesn't want to look at itself. Is that fear culture? It's a culture of fear, and it's sort of, it's totally fake. Because, you know, Naomi Klein, when she writes about the new stage of capitalism, it's sort of, you know, before the, the CIA went then to, to, they wanted to stabilize the political scene, they so-called want to establish democracy, and then corporations can move in. Nowadays, they make war because it's the capitalism of war. They make war and they cause disaster because that's what makes money these days. They say, oh, the swine flu, oh, the swine flu, and sort of the big corporations, the big pharmacy are buying out World Health, Health Organization. You say, oh, we have to invent something with this whole thing because we have to sell more pills. And they, they sort of make people afraid so they would buy more pills. And it's the same with terrorism. They make people afraid because then they can sell weapons. And it's bullshit. And it's very clear now. Yes. It's sort of, and it's sort of like, it's the same with weapons of mass destruction. It's a total lie. And it's through lies. It's that lookalike culture that sort of we have to adopt because we have to be afraid. And it's the same with, with, with everything. With everything. It's sort of, you know... I don't know, maybe I'm deviating from your question. But... <laughs> 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 